There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, aboran, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about what radioisotopes were and what radioisotopes do to come back to its stable state, which is non radioisotope form. Um, in this video, we're going to cover the next stop point, which is quite related. And it says, identify instruments and processes that can be used to detect radiation. Before we start, I want to go over different types of radiation again and why they occur. So we have alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, which I mentioned in the last video. Alpha radiation was just a removal of a helium particle, so that's what alpha radiation. And the helium particle had an atomic mass of four, it had two protons, and this was the helium particle. And this was removed if the atomic number of the element was higher than 82. So uranium is the first element which has atomic number of more than 82, but anything above that is just too big. So these are just too big too big and it's going to remove one of these helium particles to become smaller again. So the reason why that this happens is to become smaller. We also said we have a beta radiation and beta radiation was a bit different. In beta radiation we have a changing of this is beta radiation. And here we change a a neutron into a proton. And the reason why is because sometimes the ratio is not, may, might not be ideal. We said that the ratio for uh, at, for people, for elements, not for people, but for elements with the atomic number should be less than 20. The ratio of those should be 1 to 1, which means for elements with the atomic number of less than 20, we should have one proton for every one neutron. And for atomic numbers which have, for elements which have atomic number greater than 20, it should be a ratio of one proton to 1.5 neutrons. But if it's too big, so bigger than 82, it's also not, not good. But yeah, for, so between 21 and 82, uh, we should have a 1 to 1.5 ratio. Whereas any element with atomic number less than 20 should have a 1 to 1 ratio. So, so if we have too many neutrons, this is where the ideal state, but if we have too many neutrons, we have better radiation because the better radiation brings the neutrons back down because it changes our neutrons into a proton. And we also have gamma radiation, and the gamma radiation was just that excess energy, which is removed in a, like in a ray. Like a, you can imagine it to be like a sun ray, but just more deadly. Um, so yeah, it's like a, like a ray. These are the three different types of radiation. And I'm gonna, in this video, I'm going to cover ways that we can detect this radiation. So for example, if we have a nuclear meltdown, how do we know if there's radiation around us? We know it because we use these different instruments, which the dot point says to so identify instruments. We need to just know the names of these instruments that, used, that are used to detect radiation. So when it comes to dot point, and the main thing is to know these names, but I do want to go just quickly over what they are and, and how they work. So in the Geiger meter, or sometimes also known as a Geiger counter, both of these words are used. What happens is we these are used to detect gamma radiation. So remember, gamma radiation was that just that excess energy which is removed in, in the form of a ray. Um, the reason why is because gamma radiation ionizes argon. So we can imagine these red dots here in the middle to be argon. And argon is a, usually a noble gas. But if, it's, if there's energy added to it, what will actually happen is electrons escape. So I've written electrons that escape flow into circuits. So this radiation here, which is meant by this squiggly yellow line, will actually make argon lose an electron. So these blue dots are the electrons. So you can see here they've got a blue dot which is going into a circuit. So argon is, has lost its electron and these electrons join the circuit and then they, they flow. So they flow in the circuit. And when they flow in the circuit, what will actually happen is this electron flow produces sound. That's the whole that clicking sound, a click, 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 click. That's the Geiger counter or the Geiger meter. So in that case, if we have gamma radiation or present, what that means is it will actually produce electricity and that electricity will produce that sound. So people will go around with that Geiger meter and if they hear that clicking, that click, 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 click sound, that means that gamma radiation has ionized argon. 
so gamma radiation is present. So they know that there is some radiation close to them. We also have the cloud chamber. And the cloud chamber, it detects alpha radiation. Alpha radiation is actually the most deadly type, but it's usually not as bad as gamma radiation. And the reason why is because you can't even penetrate paper. So if this is through paper, alpha radiation wouldn't be able to go through it. They will try, but it wouldn't be able to go through even paper. So even though it's more deadly, in terms of if it hits you, it's more deadly, but it can't penetrate much, whereas gamma radiation can penetrate even lead, so it's a lot more. Um, it's alpha radiation is detected by something called a cloud chamber. So what you can imagine here, we've got our source of radiation, so this will just be, if, if there's radiation present, it will come through this source, and there are these air particles. So what I mean by air particles is it could be O2, so it could be oxygen, or it could be N2, it could be nitrogen. And these air particles will be ionized by this radiation. So what I mean by ionized is we'll just lose some electrons. And these purple dots will fly around as the ion form and hit condensed alcohol particles. So these alcohol particles are just floating around in the air. They're usually their vapor. So at the moment they're vapor. So alcohol vapor, and what vapor means, it's gas. But as soon as these ion particles hit it, it'll become liquid, it'll be condensed, become liquid. So um, alpha radiation ionized air particles, ionized air particles condense alcohol. So once these ionized air particles are present, what will happen is you will have a cloud is produced, a cloud is produced. So you'll have a cloud coming, appearing, because the ionization has led to condensation of alcohol in the air, which means if alpha radiation was present, we can know that because a cloud will appear. If the cloud has appeared, that means alpha radiation is present. We also have something called film, ba film badge. This is often used, you know, if you have those people in their suits and they go into any place that has radiation, they have to have their suits on. And what they'll often have is they have these badges, which you might have seen people look at movies and they look at some badge to see how much radiation there is. And the way this works is it absorbs radiation and changes color if radiation is present. So it detects, there's, it detects two different types of radiation. It detects beta and gamma radiation. And what happens is these films, so these films you can see there are different shades. And when there is radiation present, they will change color. There is usually different types of films. There's some which are fast absorbing, which means that even the small dose will make them change color. And that means that even if there's only a small amount of radiation, they will know it because that, that fast absorbing film has changed color. Whereas the slow absorbing one takes a lot longer. And this works with high doses. So if there's a high dose, then over time the slow absorbing film will also change color. So they can differentiate not only if there's radiation present, but how much radiation is also present. So uh, for people who work with in nuclear areas, they'll have that on, and then they can see, okay, is there radiation present? Is it really bad or is it not too bad? And they can make a decision, should I remove, leave the area or should, or should I stay? And these film badges are often used in those kind of scenarios. When it comes to this dot point, because it says identify instruments used, the main thing is just remember the names, Geiger counter, cloud chamber, or film badge. These would be three instruments. But again, just if you know roughly how it works, it's easier to remember as well. And I mean, it's also more fun as well. So these were just the way it works, but the main parts are the names of these different um, instruments. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.